Hello all YouTubers, I am Dweller Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning back into this tropical discussion for September 11, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest forecast and best forecast from the Weather Dude, then please, every single one of you that is not subscribed, please click the subscribe and the ring and the notification bell so you guys stay up to date with the latest the Weather Dude content. And also, please watch the whole video. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for a thousand subscribers. It really does mean a lot to me. And this is taking the next step towards monetization. So please watch the whole video. It really does help out my channel a lot. And also, please give this video a like and share this with your friends. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. So today, we're going to be talking about Invest 95L. And my next premiere for today will be 96L. So 95L, I wanted to, I wanted to do 96L first, but I kind of wanted to do the invest in order. So we're going to be doing 95L uh, for the first video that you're watching right now. That's off the coast of Africa near the Cabo Verde Islands. And depending on when you're watching this, it may be out or not. But my 96L premiere just after this, we'll be talking about 96L that's developing near the Bahamas, Florida, and Cuba. Now for today, for this video, we're going to be talking about 95L. And as you can see... Has a 90% chance to develop in the next five days, but it still has a very high chance to develop of 70% even in the next two days. So this is, I want to wait till the two o'clock update. You know, I usually like to wait for that just so you can get you guys updated. Uh, broad area, low pressure associated with a tropical wave. Uh, again, a few hundred miles southwest of Cabo Verde Islands. We're getting some thunderstorms with it. It's moving about 15 to 20 miles an hour west across the Atlantic. Uh, we could even see a tropical depression and tropical storm form uh, within the next couple or few days as it moves over the Atlantic. But as you can see, it's got a it's got a big wide open area that it could potentially form in. It's a big cone that that has a potential to form it. So this storm has a lot of open road ahead of it. Now the storm itself currently has uh, sustained winds of thirty miles per hour. We're not getting a report on the wind gusts. Pressure is a thousand eight millibars, so it's a little bit on the higher end, but it's not it's not too bad. Um, when you look at the satellite imagery, um, uh, to be honest with you, this thing kind of looks like a mess. Um, not really saying there's that much shear at all. So here is Invest 95L on a satellite imagery, all right? And it's, I can tell it's trying to get a little bit of a low center, but it's kind of having a hard time develop, as you can see right there. Now, according to the two o'clock update from the National Arcane Center, it's currently located about maybe about 27 degrees west and maybe 12 degrees north. So when we look at that on the satellite imagery, yeah, like as I said, located right about here, it's trying to get a center, but it's like I said, it's having a hard time getting that. And you can see, I have Satellite Loop actually playing. If you look at the timestamps, they're actually moving pretty slowly. And this the storm is just moving very fast here, especially maybe not the storm center itself, but the convection is getting like kind of like slingshotted towards the west here. Um, we're also seeing some convection develop to the south, so it's a lot of convection, but it's just kind of messy. There's a lot of there's a lot of thunderstorm activity, but it's messy. It doesn't look too organized, and that's what you need to really develop a tropical system. Now, in terms of the sea surface temperature anomalies here, um, as for the storm is located, uh, I want to say right about here. So it's sitting right in some average waters, actually. Maybe some cooler waters to the south of it, some warmer waters to the north of it. Um, but it will be moving into an overall more warmer ocean water temperature environment than it is now. So hopefully conditions will look a little bit better for the storm in its near future. Um, as for the sea surface temperatures currently, though, it's pretty much the same, you know, low to mid 80s. Then once it heads out towards the Caribbean, if it gets out here and if it still makes it out there, maybe getting close to the mid to upper 80s and definitely some warmer water there that can really help the storm develop. Now, the current storm location, we just got a brand new update in here. The exact low, uh, 27 and a half degrees west and 11 and a half degrees north. So those are kind of like your exact coordinates for you guys in case you guys know a lot about coordinates. There you go. Um, so some track guidance here. We're getting some new tracking models in for 18Z. And as you can see, a lot of the models do take it west and then kind of like bending towards the north but that doesn't mean it's going to go out to sea completely um but a lot of models do take it west a couple models actually one model which is being a little bit ridiculous is taking towards a couple of our islands to kind of take it north and completely out to sea but i think it could certainly move in that westerly direction now here is invest 95l here and this is the gefs model tracks now i want you to pay attention to something i usually say um, well, actually, sometimes with GEF, GEFS model tracks, sometimes our strength is a little bit off. But this I do want you to pay attention to because look how strong all the models 
at, like even at the weakest, have it at around orange, which is still less than 990 millibars of pressure. But a lot of models take the pressure as low as 970 or even 960. So this pressure could get ridiculously low here. Um, and that's not good. This could go some under, undergo some rapid strengthening. That's what the G, GEFS models are hinting at, whether it could be the Western Atlantic, kind of like where Paulette is now, maybe closer to Bermuda could do some rapid strengthening, maybe in the Northern Caribbean, maybe near the Bahamas. But a lot of the models are indicating a lot of strength. As you can see, in this area I outlined in black, the models indicate pressures anywhere from like 990 all the way down to 950, right? But where the storm is now, and in the near future, the pressure is up, up to 1,000 and 1,010. So the models make it weaker now, but then going undergoing some very fast strengthening later. So that's something to keep watch over. And our brand new intensity guidance, at first they were saying tropical storm, maybe cat one. Now a lot of models make it at least a cat one, maybe a cat two close to a category three hurricane. So yeah, a lot of a lot has changed between 12 and 18 Z model runs. So refresh your weather maps if you guys are looking at this as well, maybe on your own device and you haven't updated yet because yes, actually most of the models make it a cat two and, a, and about one or two do make it a cat three, but most models take it anywhere from category one to category two status, which is pretty significant. Now, let's take a look here at our ship's diagnostic message and explain why this could strengthen. Um, like I said, shear is a little bit messy right now. This, that could explain why the storm's looking a little bit messy, but it's manageable, right? 25 miles an hour shear, maybe 26, uh, but that could taper down over the next couple of days to maybe less than 20, maybe even less than 10 knots of shear at one point. Um, also, a good thing to consider is the sea surface temperatures. And if it does strengthen, it won't strengthen until later. So pay attention over here, where the, where the wind shear is really low, like 11 knots, 4 knots. Sea surface temperatures will also be a lot warmer a week from now than they are now. Sea surface temperature could get close to 30, if not hitting 30 degrees Celsius in a week. All right, so that could be the explanation of it. Also, look at the storm speed. That could be another reason why. All right. It's kind of moving pretty fast now, slowing down briefly, speeding back up, and then dropping to eight or three knots, maybe three miles an hour. Okay, as we head through, that's how fast it could be moving in a week. Another reason why it could strengthen farther down the line in a week or so, maybe, because look at the heat content values down generally anywhere from five to 15. It can get as high as maybe 50 or 65 over the next five to seven days. So not as much development now. I mean, it could develop into a weaker tropical storm now, but Pay attention to some potentially more significant development further on down the road. All right, so let's take a look at our GFS model. Now, what's funny is for the actual maps, like 18Z came out on all the model tracking maps and everything, but the actual GFS model hasn't come out with their 18Z model run yet. That's actually usually in a couple hours from now. Um, at this time, at this exact time, it's about 3.45 or so. All right, so, but let's take a look at the 12Z model run because they do indicate that some could potentially develop here uh, when we're talking about invest 95l so let's take a look at it on the precipitation obviously we'll show the cyclone vorticity signature and all that good stuff but as you can see look at this look at the gfs model they have a beast of a storm developing okay look at 2 a.m on wednesday 968 millibars of pressure all right i can't wait to look at this on the wind scale all right then the pressure remains the same 960 is that then it kind of starts weakening a little bit then strengthens a little bit yet again still 965 millibars of pressure this would be a disaster if it heads for the Northern Caribbean islands. So leeward, windwards, even as far south as Trinidad, Tobago, Northern South America, you guys need to watch out too, because any shift in this track could be catastrophic. And look at this, 948 millibars of pressure here. Um, they kind of had a similar look to Paulette here, kind of getting this strong, because there's Paulette right there. Look, so here's, this is a 95L. This is Paulette here. Um, and there you go. Take, look how strong it got. All right, 960 or so. Then they have 95L almost doing the exact same thing, the exact a similar track and almost the exact same strength. So this could be pretty scary if this impacts the Caribbean islands or even Bermuda. Now, looking at the cyclonic vorticity signature, which will make it a lot easier to see the storms. All right, as you can see, let's take it back a little bit. And there it is. It's kind of like a huge tropical wave and maybe two separate entities could, could like spawn off of, of one huge developing tropical disturbance. All right, so look at this. Wow. Okay, this thing gets its act together all right. Now, at this point, it looks very, very strong. I will give it that, but it's a little tiny. Now, am I saying tiny storms can't have a big impact? No. But look at what happens from now. This is from 2 p.m. on Thursday the 17th. And look how this thing kind of explodes. It kind of gets a little bigger, right? I mean, it keeps strengthening, but it gets a little bigger as well. So this thing would be 
a devastation, especially a Paulette impacts Bermuda. And then this could be heading in that direction. Now this might turn towards the east before it hits Bermuda. But look at the look at the wind ice alliance. Look how much they explode. All right, this this could turn into a huge wind producing storm. All right. Even if areas that may seem far away from the storm could get a lot of wind and maybe even some rain. So this could have a big wind field, and that does, that would not help areas that live close to the storm or where the storm could be heading, I should say. So according to the GFS model, this their forecast is to become a hurricane 8 p.m. on Tuesday the 15th, which is four days from now. All right, that's when the forecast is to become at least a Category 1 hurricane. Then over the next week, the pressure gets really, really low here, and we're talking about winds getting to 960. All right, or excuse me, pressure getting down to 960. Now I'm going to try. Usually that has a hard time doing this, but if I click on 95L, will it follow the storm? No. It always gets, what happens when you do this kind of map is that it will, that's why I don't like to, to center it on the storm. I like to have a wider view. is because of GFS, they'll center it on the storm, but then another low kind of distracts them and then it just keeps, gets completely taken off course. So I'm going to switch over to here. See? See, it was stuck on this low when it's supposed to be following this one. So that's why I don't like to zoom in on the storm too much in case you notice that I haven't been doing that lately. I like to get like a wider view because I can't lose the storm, right? Sometimes, you know, it's nice to have a human brain just not to rely on the computer all the time because when you can follow it yourself with your own eyes like this, now you can actually see where the storm is going. So looking at this here, 948 millibar, 940, 943 here at its lowest point. And you can see how, how massive this wind field has gone at this point. I mean, even some pretty gusty winds extend all the way back, almost to the Jersey Shore, but not really. Um, but still, a huge wind field with this storm system, potentially. 943 millibars of pressure is what they're forecasting at the strongest point. Now, keep in mind, that was a GFS model. We're going to take a look at the GEM model now. And I actually have a surprise for you guys. Well, let me run the surprise for you. I have the European model for you guys at the end. I will be showing the European model today. Um, but let's take a look at the gem model first. So again, that was GFS. We're going to take a look at the gem model now, right? And you can see they really do nothing with it. They're, well, that's Paulette up there. As you can see, there's Paulette. That's not, in case you get confused, that's not 95L. Um, 95L, matter of fact, they kind of have it, they kind of have it going west, pump, like pumping the brakes and then shooting toward, like due north. And then maybe heading towards the, maybe the Azores or the Azores, however you want to say it, which are up there, I think. All right, so they kind of have it like, going towards the west, pumping the brakes completely straight shot to the north, then heading west yet again, sitting there or strengthening, then another low merges off Africa, and that's like the new kid in town. All right, and then the low just sits there, and at, as for 10 days out, there's 95L, and there's a new kid on the block down there, something else that could form down the road. Now, looking at the Cyclone Vorticity Signature, all right, you can see, kind of, kind of like the GFS that showed us, it emerges as one... Kind of like elongated, messy tropical wave, but it's a huge tropical wave. Then maybe it kind of starts getting its act together. Then it just gets slingshotted all the way to the north here. All right, there it is right there. So maybe not looking too well organized. Now looking at the wind speeds, let's take a look at those wind speeds here. So there's low getting slingshotted to the north. Eh, all right, it's, it's trying to pick up some tropical storm force winds. But they're not making it a Cat 2 or Cat 3 hurricane like the GFS model was saying. Um, nowhere near that, actually. Actually, they make it pretty much a like low to mid-level of tropical storm. Then let's, it, it stays there. Then we have a high pressure here, maybe a blocking one up here, which is why it starts stalling, maybe. Which stalls right there. Um, the storm stalls. Then it might maybe get closer to hurricane strength. All right, maybe getting some more 60, 70 mile per hour winds that could get a lot closer to hurricane status. But as for right now... Gem model doesn't look too confident in this storm system. Now I have two maps to show you before we get to the European model, and that's our development chances. So according to the NCP, FNMOC, and the Gem model, as you can see here, they give this storm, I believe, a 60 to 70. There we go, 60 to 70. I have to read the key there. 60 to 70 percent chance of development. As for the NCP ensemble models, however, uh, they actually give the same thing: 60 to 70 percent chance within there. I mean, a lot of model tracks do bring it enough farther west to say, hey, this is something to watch in the Caribbean or in Bermuda. So definitely be on the way of that. And let's take a look at the European model here. Surprise. All right. So there's 95L and wow. Okay. They actually are kind of looking similar to the GFS model. But here's the thing though. Six days and it's still back over here. All right. And then 
it kind of gets dragged off to the north, kind of like a similar track to Paulette, maybe a little bit farther south than Paulette, but heading towards the same general vicinity close to Bermuda. So even if this doesn't get that close to Bermuda, still some huge waves. All right, after they, they could potentially get smashed by, by Paulette. So thank you guys for watching today's video. Uh, stay tuned if it's not out already. Stay tuned if, if it's already out. Hopefully it is by now, by the time you're watching this. Please consider watching it. My Invest 96L forecast that could be it's impacting Bahamas, Cuba, maybe Florida and the Gulf Coast in the near future. So thank you guys for watching today's video. I am Dweather Dude signing off. Till next time, please subscribe and stay awesome. See you guys in the next video.